Yeah, so uh, yeah, I talk a lot, but I talk kind of low. So, so uh, you you can see up here. Uh, this is actually I think Banksy tweeted this or from Banksy account. Uh, this is something that I don't abide by. I I, I kind of tell people everything about myself and everything that I know and as far as security goes. Uh, I pretty much talk a lot. Uh, you can ask anybody that works with me. So, so uh, first of all, uh, I'm passionate about a couple of things. I'm passionate about food. You can probably tell. Uh, I'm passionate about Ruby, uh, security, and just all kind of other things. But uh, one of the things that we do, we're an Austin-based company. I live here. Uh, I live in Round Rock, but I work. We work downtown. And so one of the things we love to do at Vthread is we 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 t we're touring all the food establishments uh, in Austin. Uh, last night, we had a speaker dinner, and it was amazing. So if you haven't checked out this place, this place was pretty awesome. Uh, my, my man Alex is here with, with V-Threat. Uh, we got to check out this place, Alex. This place was awesome. So uh, <laughs> it was great. So uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, one of the first rules of being a speaker is you want to establish credibility. So I want to tell you a little bit about myself. It's going to be like a history of Marcus real quick. When I was 18 years old, I'm from a small, small town called Marlin, Texas. Anybody ever heard of Marlin in here? Yeah, so I'm, uh, it's a real small town, about 2,000 people. So I joined the Navy when I was 18. Uh, I worked crypto, so I worked for NSA for eight years. And I worked at DIA, Defense Cybercrime Center. All these places are either spy places or trying to catch spies. So I um, worked at CSC. CSC is a big federal contractor. There I trained federal agents how to catch hackers. I worked at CMS. This is important because the 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 last Die Hard with when they were doing the whole uh, fire cell thing, that was actually that facility. I was securing that facility. I was a senior security guy there. So how I got to Austin is I worked for this company called Rapid Seven. I know we probably have some Rapid Seven people in the house. It's a Ruby shop. Uh, and then after I left Rapid Seven, uh, I I started just in the wilderness trying to trying to do security my trying to do security myself and trying to help people out. So I did a lot of consulting. But over time, all these years, I've been doing security about 20 years or either securing or, or breaking into stuff or, or stealing people's communications, reading all your emails, all that stuff. Besides that, over all those years, I noticed that nothing's really changed, right? So this is a bicycle. This is like a vintage bicycle. And I think that like security and pretty much everything, no matter what, what what's happening over time, Security is still the same. And the most important thing that people want to do is they want to try to keep stuff confidential, like confidential information. You know, if you write code, some of you guys write platforms. Some of you guys do in-house development. So the most important thing is uh, confidentiality, uh, probably to most of you guys. So what's going to happen here is uh, I'm going to, at the end of this, I'm going to tempt the demo gods, and I'm going to try to do a demonstration of me hacking a Rails app. So I wrote a Rails app. And, our, and uh, actually, I've got paid before uh, to to hack Rails apps before as well. So uh, and and trying to break in the apps for people. So uh, I'm going to write an app. I, so I wrote an app. This app has a lot of stuff that I see uh, as you know the current problems that I see a lot of developers do. I've seen senior developers, uh, firms. I see people that are learning Rails uh, make these same mistakes. So you're going to see a little bit. So. So uh, as, as I said, like I'm, I'm also passionate about being an entrepreneur. And all the developers in here, if you want to start a company, uh, I, I would like to talk about this a little bit because I like Rails, I like Ruby because it allowed me to, you know, create my company and all that stuff. So uh, after I left Rapid Seven, like I said, I was running around, wandering around in the wilderness. Wilderness. I wrote all kind of hacker tools. So a lot of hackers, like they think I'm cool. Some, some. When you write hacker tools, what happens is sometimes you have good guys and sometimes you have bad guys use your stuff. And you really can't, you can't, can't control it. So a lot of people like me, and it's kind of weird because on Twitter I got black hats following me and stuff. It's kind of, it's kind of awkward. Uh, so, uh, so anyway, I went through an accelerator. I went to accelerator in Virginia, uh, and and this is the entrepreneur bit. So, uh, uh, so. I just want to just, uh, the Ruby, the Rails community has really been awesome because it allowed me to start my company. So we we, uh, we did a total Rails-based app, and this is how our app looks. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, this is this is all built in Ruby on Rails. We use Sinatra. So we're a heavy Ruby shop. Uh, and also, I was told that I can tell that we're going to be looking for a senior Rails uh, dev, a Ruby dev at Vthreat. So that's a plug. But... Uh, the thing is, like, this is a beautiful web app we read. So what we do at Vthread is we imitate attackers on networks. 
So, uh, you know, I'm trying to give uh, to people like, you know, what we call blue teamers in the security community, something to imitate bad guys on our network. And also, like I said, at the end of this, I'm going to show you a demo to see how people hack uh, uh, Rails apps. Uh, also in the talk, I'm going to give you plenty of tips and tools to use to help try to secure uh, your Rails applications. So a uh, shout out to Heroku. We, we host our stuff on Heroku. And this is relevant because I'm going to tell you how we kind of secure our stuff. Because at the end of the day, information wants to be free. Uh, and, you know, you heard that probably for Richard Stallman said that a long time ago. Uh, you're going to get hacked. You just need to notice uh, when it happens. So in order to determine if you've been hacked or not, you need to log all the things. So log everything. And so since we're on Heroku, we, we use paper trail. Uh, and we, we use paper trail logs. We log errors and, and all those things. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to get real heavy into tips, and I'm going get to get into a demo. Another tip, anybody heard about Let's Encrypt yet? All right, sweet. So that's that's pretty hot. Anybody mess around with Burp? A couple of people? I'm going to show, I'm going to do a Burp demo to show you, like, how people will, is, are trying to hack your apps. Zap proxy, Zap, so, so Burp. Is a is a is a proxy. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It's a proxy. It helps you. It helps uh, attackers to to break into your Rails apps, do uh, man manipulate parameters, manipulate all the kind of things in order to uh, and try to hack into your apps. Uh, here's, here's Zap. Zap is a free open source one. It's it's a so Burp is pretty cheap. It's like three hundred bucks. But the importance of all these tools is I'm trying to give you the tools. I'm just trying to show you what attackers are using, so it would be wise for you to try to play around with these things. Not if, now, I'm not saying your whole team has to be proficient, but you should have a couple of people on your team playing with these things. That's a free tool. So there's also another tool called Nikto. Um, this is a, it's, it's written in Perl, which is kind of like blasphemy for a Ruby conference. But uh, but uh, Nikto, it does enumeration, it looks for your certificates, it tries to, you know, brute force logins, it tries to do all kind of stuff. It's free, so check it out. How many people use Breakman? That's pretty cool. How many people are using Breakman Pro? So uh, if you haven't heard about Breakman Pro, uh, you need to you need to check it out. It's it's uh it's like the same you know base open source platform. It's pretty hot. Uh, this is actually so I created an app and I, I ran uh, Breakman against it, and it says I had all these vulnerabilities. <coughs> Here's the details of the vulnerabilities. And this is cool just to do the basic, uh, you know, housekeeping of your Rails apps, right? Right here. Uh, so, so right here, I had all these vulnerabilities. You see, I'm running out there the version of Rails. So I go to Rails site. Hey, what's the new version? I get the new gem. And so now I only have one one problem, and that problem is I have uh, this key in here, and you shouldn't put that in a repo. That's something I wouldn't necessarily change on my side, but I wouldn't upload that to my repo. So also there's bundler audit. How many people have used this before? You need to be getting up, getting up into it. So hopefully, uh, if you if you could, I don't know, you could take some notes. But these tools, these tools are. This is free. These are the things you should be doing to your Rails apps. There's also Jim Canary. It uses a combination of some of those things. So uh, what I'm going to get into is a little bit of the Jim file and, and things that I use, and we use at Vthreat to try to keep our stuff secure. So. Uh, Right here, a couple of important things right here. Uh, this device, password, uh, this this gem right here, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at, at names. I'm from Texas, so forgive me. I'm a native Texan. I come from the George W. Bush School of Pronouncing Stuff. <laughs> so so whatever that whatever that is right there, uh, that's that's pretty good for password strength. Uh, it, it, it prevents uh, people from putting in terrible passwords. Uh, it's like almost too hard, really. It, it, it's, it's a challenge for us to... It's a challenge for me to remember my passwords. I use one pass to remember passwords, though. Uh, there's the biosecurity extensions. It helps you do all kind of policies. So if you're doing enterprise, especially if you're trying to sell to big customers, uh, that that's a great, great uh, gem. And uh, and the gem that we found, this is kind of funny because, uh, you know, I'm always in customer meetings, and uh, this is what I love so much about the Ruby community. So um, I was in a I was in a customer meeting in Dallas. Uh, the customer was like, "Hey, do you guys do two-factor authentication?" And I was like, dang it, we don't have that in yet. So uh, I drove back down to Austin to our office. And then I was like, oh, there's a gym for that. Cool. It's like it's an app for that, right? 
So I was like, I, I hooked it up, we styled it, and you know, called the customer. Hey, we got two practical authentication now. Beautiful stuff. So, uh, what I'm gonna talk about quick, quick about is about user model. So this is gonna get a little, little bit, a little bit geeky, but this is like uh, basic stuff. Um, so looking into the to the to the user model, I, I try I try to tell people, and this is how we this is how we do stuff at Vthread. And and uh, since I've looked at I've done uh, web app assessments, I've looked at people's source code. I've been paid to look at people's source code, and so this is the kind of things uh, that um, that we we kind of look for. Uh, so when you're creating when you're creating uh, users and teams, uh, it's Active Record is pretty cool on how it ties everything together for you, and since uh, and we we use Devise uh, on at our at our in our shop too. So uh, does everybody? I mean, I, I mean, I've seen like everybody I've looked at. Uh, a lot of people use Devise. Can I get a hand raise on who 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 uses Devise? So a lot of people, right? So we use Devise, and so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we use it and how we use the built-in. Um, What's the things that are built in device? And I'm going to show you a demonstration of that too. Uh, so, uh, you know, user belongs to a team. And this is the things I'm going to talk about here. This is the kind. This is what we we mostly do. How how we how we can find our stuff. So, device gives you gives you an object current user, and you're able to you're able to constrain things based on that. And we don't we don't use pretty much IDs for anything. And I do see people using IDs. We use UUIDs for everything. For any any kind of record, we we don't really look it up by we never look it up by the the actual ID of that record. Uh, <clears throat> this is how we we set contacts when people come in. You you want to always use that current user context because what that does is allows you to use device to kind of weed out stuff, and so you're not letting users just arbitrary. You're not telling people what user they are, and uh, I'm going to show you in Burp how how attackers change that kind of stuff. Uh, this is kind of like a, a little pattern that we use uh, to to create UUIDs. We create a, a random UUID, and we'll sign that to to the we'll sign that to uh, every record we do. Everything we do has a UUID on it. We never want to expose. So basically, if you, if the more stuff you expose to an attacker, the the worse off you are. So we rather do a, a random UUID. UUID is pretty strong mathematically, and it's hard for you to to uh, to guess that stuff. Uh, so um, here, here's the whole current current root user paradigm. I'm gonna get. You know, I can talk more about this in the demo, uh, where you you uh, everything we do. If you're doing new record, if you're doing a lookup or anything, we're we're basing it off the device thing. So I tell people don't use don't don't use the the base model. Like if it's a team, never do team dot whatever, like capital team. You know, never never do that stuff. Here's a couple of different. Here's a couple of. Um, uh, this was from RailsConf 2005. I mean, 2015. I don't know if you guys seen these. These are really two uh, good talks, and they talk about a lot of stuff like that. Uh, but what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to I'm going to get to the nitty gritty. Uh, so I always forget. Um, I always forget to give my contact information. So uh, here here it is. Uh, you can email me uh, at Marcus, and I'm going to do this before I get into the demo. Or my man Alex is here. Alex. Alex is our, our lead developer, and like I said, we're going we're looking for another uh, we're looking for a senior Rails developer uh, in our shop. So, first of all, um, automation is pretty cool. So, uh, like I said, this is Breakman Pro. Breakman Pro. What I did there is is uh, I, I I wrote an app, I patched the app, you know, all the patches, and then what what we have now is we have an app. And I call this this the name of this app is called Weirdo. So, uh, so uh, the app is like super insecure. Uh, I know that because I wrote it to be insecure. Yeah, how many people like writing insecure code? So I wrote it insecure on purpose, just so I could go through and and show you uh, with the use of burp how people can enumerate stuff. So this is kind of risky. I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to secure app on the fly. And I'm going to try to hack an app on the fly. So, uh, you know, everybody make a sacrifice, uh, sacrifice some chicken wings to the demo gods. <coughs> so we're going to go. So this is this is our risk. I'm going to be in and out of several apps, but um, I want to show. I also want to show you a couple of things. 
I guess I don't have internet. So I use uh I use Atom uh for for, our, for my text editor and that's looking weird. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be going back and forth between real code uh and uh, a to hacking tool they call Burp and the app. So and I'm working with two browsers. Let me get everything set up. So the browser that I have, uh I'm gonna be working with uh we we'll work with Chrome here. See that that's a fresh app, ain't it? That's the hot that's the hotness right there. And on this side we have um we have uh this this right here. And let me see if that's still working. Let me see if I have my proxy working. Uh, so this is Burp right here. And so Burp allows you to intercept all uh, communications uh, from from the browser. So I set you set up I set up Firefox as a as a proxy, and and what I'm doing here is it intercepts all the communications. So I can forward or drop uh, the, these communications. So uh, I would recommend you guys get into Burp. It is pretty cool. So you can you can forward this. I'm going to forward those things, and I should get. So this is Firefox right here. So every time I'm doing something in Fox, if I say show. It doesn't initially show it because I have to go back to Burp, and I have to forward that request, come back, and it shows the record. So that's how that's how you that's how you use Burp. You go back and forth, and there's a lot of automation. What? Let's get, let's get bad. Let's get bad. Oop. Somebody, you said bad chicken. Somebody. <laughs> Dang. Hold on a second. Let me try to restart Burp. This is the danger of trying to do live demos. One of my high risk type of guy. Struggle if I get that. So this is a this is the free edition of Burp. I think Burp costs like three hundred dollars. So, so what? Why I like why I like Burp is uh, because uh, I like anything that the attackers are using. Let me try this here. So forward it. All right, cool. Looks like Burp Burp is back back up and running. So what what's uh, what's interesting about Burp, and, and I'm going to show you the code. Like I said, I, I I'm using a bad pattern here that I see a lot of people do. It's like when I when I look up the index of things uh, here, I'm doing thing where, and I say current user ID because it's it's pulling the current user ID from uh, it's pulling it from, uh, it's using a device to to get that right there. And so uh, when I do when I do an index, let me get to Chrome. When I do the index of Chrome here, <coughs> and I go to things, it's going to give me all the, the 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 records here. So one of my users is Willie, and the other one is Nelson. So this is this is Nelson here, and so this is showing the the user here. So let me show you a couple of things. These are these are the patterns that I see that are that are that are kind of epic fail from a development perspective. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So this is like a whatever the new thing is. Uh, if if you look here, I'm going to view the source here, and uh, here you can see that there's a value of two here, and so that's a problem that I see a lot. People put parameters, hidden hidden fields, and nobody's going to see it. You know, All right? They put hidden fields, and it's giving to me the user ID there. And and another epic thing is it doesn't even matter if you do a UUID there. You don't want to put any user direct user related information in your page hidden. But I see that a lot, uh, and uh, you know, some tr some people try to put it in cookies and all that that other stuff. But the the thing about Burp that makes Burp pretty cool, and another thing is, I showed you Let's Encrypt. Uh, uh, like Burp, it actually can break SSL, and so you can put Burp, and Burp will handle all the SSL connectivity, and it'll it'll break out all your stuff in the plain text. So don't think just because your website has SSL on it that nobody can't do these kind of things. So 
it's very important that you, you like lock some of these things up. So the fact that I have uh, the field here, that means that some I can submit, and, and I'll show you this on, on the other side. So this is on this is using I'm using BERT proxy. And if I create new thing, again I have to go back to BERT and forward that. And I'm gonna say hello there. This. So when I create thing, it's gonna create a post request, right? So when I go back over to burp, it's gonna show me the, the, the that request. The token, all these cool things that, that, that you expect. And so we're here, user thing, user ID one. So I must be logged in as Willie. But I can actually edit this and I can actually put it to there and I can actually submit that to the other person's account. You know, let's try to let's try to make that happen. So by just by editing this, and it can get way more complicated. And with Burp, a lot there's stuff built in here that and I'm just trying to be really, really simple here. Uh you can enumerate all kind of stuff. You can break encryption with this, you can do like a ridiculous amount of stuff. So we're gonna forward this, forward it. And so here uh, it says user ID two, but I'm I'm Willie, so it posted to the other account. So now when I go back to things, we said hello there. This we shouldn't see we shouldn't see that. Go over and forward the request. So these are all the things that Willie created, right? But using Burp, what I did is I actually added it to the other person's account. And these are the kind of things you, you can do with Burp, and these are how attackers will, will get, get your stuff. So also, if I said if I mean it's it that there's things like that. So remember I told you the whole the whole problem with UUID with, with uh why we do UUIDs for everything is because like I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna show this record, and you see right here it says six. So uh this six right here is this belongs to me. Uh, this belongs to the user Nelson, right? And so the fact that I'm, I'm exposing and never do this, this is another thing you do not do if you're doing Rails apps, don't expose, I would, I would refrain on exposing the record number, right? Because they're too easy to guess. So I know this is six. This user is, is Nelson. I'm gonna go back to Willie and I'm going to, I'm gonna go back to the Willie account and delete something in somebody else's account. Uh, this stuff happens all the time on, on major sites. It's kind of it's kind of hilarious. So when I do when I do a delete here, I'm gonna say destroy this. Yep. Okay. So when I go to burp here, I see that it's going to destroy something, and it's doing a post method. And and we when we dang it, where in the heck is it? It's uh, actually encoded here. Hold on a second. Things post. You see this right here? I'm going to change the six. Now see what happens here. Now if we're if we're look here, it says hi test. See, it got rid of the the it got rid of the record from the other person's account, right? So you're you're able to. If you're not if you're not doing this correctly, and so I'm going to show you the, the fix real quick on how you, how you do this correctly. So is everybody everybody on board? So we're basically since we're able to we're able to know the, the IDs of the other records, and we're not doing any kind of uh, checking here. You're able to delete stuff on other people's accounts, add stuff on other people's accounts, and and do things like that. And this is all by using that using that proxy. So don't assume that the, the data, the, the, the lesson is don't assume that the data that your users are giving you is valid data. It's never valid. Don't, don't, never, never trust it. So um, here, what we're going to do is we're going to shore, shore this up. I'm going to just, I'm going to go through and change all, change all these things real quick. It's only a couple of things. So, so my lesson, my lesson to everyone is, do not let people do capital model. It's like my, my golden rule. If you can, is there somehow you can parse or or uh, or get rid of any kind of uh, any kind of 
ability for them to write anything to your database, do it. So what we'll do here is we'll say current user dot things. And we don't need where because it's going to take it off the current user. So this is going to grab records from the current user. So that's the first step. So that's that's getting rid of the I can request any record uh, from the index page. So now we're on things. We refresh it, and it should it should show me the same things. So that's got that's one that's one problem out of the way. It's only going to ever show me stuff from my from my account. Second thing you can do here is when you create new things, when you create new, you can just go down here, current user, dot things new. Right? That's gonna that's gonna write every every time. That's gonna give you that's gonna give you the UUID, so you don't have to do the hidden UUID now. You don't have to do a hidden fill because it's gonna take care of care take care of it for you. And when you write something to the database, when you create it, you want to do the same thing user.things and also down here what you can do is you can get rid of you can get rid of the user ID from here you don't have to accept that in as a parameter when it when it says destroy right here so what's going to happen here um, is when you set it you want to do this also you want to say current user dot things and it's going to find that parameter. It's only going to find it if it belongs to that current user. Because we already established a relationship that the user owns all the things. Save that. And any any place where you see like a capital T thing, you want to get rid of that. Uh, hey, looks like everything should work here. Am I missing anything? Am I good? Sweet. So now we now we refresh or we delete or anything. We're gonna. What we can do here is I want to also go back and fix this thing where if we say new thing, we want to get rid of that hidden fill in our rails. So if I go over here to form, we're gonna get rid of that hidden fill. Hidden fills are usually a bad idea. So save it. And uh, when we refresh it, when we refresh our form, it's not going to have that. It's not going to have that in there. So I can refresh this. And so the hidden's gone now. So what we've done is we're not exposing our, our record information to the user, and it's all going to be done on the back end by device in this case. So everything should work. I'm going to go here. And if I go back, it's, it's creating a new record. But the but the thing that we want to try to figure out is if we can go into, we can't go into burp now to actually update that record because what we did is we, on this side, if I I'm going to create a new thing. Forward. Oh, this is not on the right one. So now when we post it, we're not posting that, that user ID at all. So it's going to be taking a user ID off the thing, off the off uh off a device. And now then what we have here. We haven't we have we have everything what we what we expect here. And we destroy it now. Okay. So so the key thing is like I'm gonna look for a record over here on the other account and I'm gonna try to do the same thing where I, I delete it across the accounts. So I'm gonna show it. I'm just gonna say three here. So I should be able to say in burp, I can I can go in burp and say and uh, and change that to delete three. Let's go in there. So 
So I'm gonna try to change that. Forward it, and it doesn't it doesn't exist now. So who cares if you get an ugly message? You know who who cares about that? What you're doing is you're preventing somebody from writing arbitrary records to to uh, the database. All right, cool. That so I so that that's it. Uh, that's a quick thing. That's a quick demonstration of how you can use Burp uh, in and I recommend you all the tools. You can email me if you want to just play around with those tools. Uh, you can definitely uh, use use, uh, use all those tools for free. The, the version of Burp that I just used is totally free, and it allow uh, it allow anybody in your organization, all developers, maybe pen testers, they need to be getting into these tools because this is what hackers are going to be using to pit, to compromise your networks. Uh, thanks for listening, and thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you.